Imagine standing on the deck of a massive vessel, as long as an aircraft carrier, gliding silently through the deep blue waters of the open ocean. The sun glints off the waves, seabirds circle overhead, and the only sound is the gentle splash of water against the hull. But this isn't a warship, and it isn't a cargo ship. Instead of tanks for fuel or crates for goods, its decks are lined with giant tanks brimming with living, growing fish. Now take a moment to let that sink in. A floating farm, moving across the ocean, producing seafood right on board. No coastlines, no ponds, no static enclosures, just a mobile ecosystem drifting where the waters are cleanest, the oxygen richest, and the temperature perfect for breeding top quality fish. What if the future of seafood didn't involve trawlers scraping the sea or crowded coastal farms? What if we could grow fish in the heart of the ocean, like a floating orchard on water? It sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? Something out of a futuristic documentary about the year 2100. But here's the twist. It's already real. In 2025, China launched the world's first fully functional deep-sea fish farming supership. This is not a prototype. It's sailing today, producing thousands of tons of seafood, and it's about to change how the world thinks about feeding billions of people. China is home to 1.4 billion people, almost one-fifth of everyone on Earth. Feeding that many mouths isn't just a challenge. It's a monumental task. Every year, China consumes over 800 million tons of grain, roughly one-third of the world's total. It raises millions of chickens, hundreds of millions of pigs, and tens of millions of cattle and sheep. And when it comes to seafood, the numbers are staggering. In 2023 alone, China produced 91 million tons of aquatic products, including fish, shellfish, and other seafood, the most of any country for over three decades. But here's the catch. Feeding billions is not just about quantity. As living standards rise, people aren't just eating more, they want better. Fresher, healthier, and more diverse seafood is in high demand. Coastal fisheries and traditional fish farms are struggling to keep up. Pollution, overfishing, and the limits of shallow waters make it harder to supply high-quality fish consistently. This creates a huge gap between what people want and what traditional methods can provide. China needed a new approach something bold, innovative, and scalable, to ensure the country's seafood supply could meet both demand and quality expectations. That's where the idea of farming fish at sea on a mobile supership begins to make sense. Even with massive production, traditional fishing and coastal aquaculture are running into serious limits. Oceans near the coast are getting polluted from industrial runoff, plastics, and chemicals, making it harder to grow healthy fish. Overfishing has depleted wild stocks, and climate change is altering water temperatures, currents, and oxygen levels, which can stress or even kill marine life. Coastal fish farms face their own problems. They're limited in size, and disease can spread quickly in crowded pens. Natural disasters like typhoons or red tides can wipe out entire harvests in hours. Meanwhile, the best-tasting, most nutritious seafood often comes from clean, deep waters far from shore, waters that are increasingly inaccessible with traditional methods. In short, the demand for high-quality fish is growing faster than conventional farming or fishing can supply it. Without innovation, billions of people risk facing seafood shortages or lower-quality products. This gap set the stage for an idea that sounds almost impossible. What if we could take the farm to the fish, instead of trying to force the fish to come to the farm? In 2018, a group of Chinese scientists asked a question that sounded like something out of a science fiction novel. What if we could raise fish not in ponds or along the coast, but on a ship that sails across the ocean? Picture this. A self-contained ecosystem aboard a massive vessel, moving freely to wherever the ocean conditions are ideal. Instead of battling polluted waters or waiting for the right season, the ship could sail to areas with clean, oxygen-rich water, perfect temperatures, and abundant nutrients. Different species could be raised in their optimal environments, all on the same vessel. 
The idea was bold, futuristic, and a little hard to believe. It challenged everything people knew about aquaculture. But it also had incredible potential. A mobile fish farm could bypass the limits of coastal farms, avoid natural disasters, reduce disease outbreaks, and consistently produce high-quality seafood. This vision wasn't just about feeding China. It was about rethinking the future of food production at sea. And while it sounded crazy at first, it planted the seed for a project that would become the world's first deep-sea floating fish farm. When the idea of a floating fish farm first appeared online, it was met with laughter and disbelief. Critics called it impractical, too expensive, or impossible to scale. After all, how could a single ship raise enough fish to make a meaningful difference for a country of 1.4 billion people? Many compared it to building a skyscraper in the middle of the desert. Ambitious, but maybe just a dream. But the scientists didn't back down. They refined the concept, tested the technology, and proved that mobility and precision could overcome the limits of traditional fish farming. Their persistence paid off. In March 2025, China officially launched Zhanjiang Bay No. 1, the world's first deep-sea fish farming supership. This wasn't a prototype. It was a fully operational vessel, capable of producing thousands of tons of seafood every year. What had seemed like a wild experiment became a real, functioning farm on the open ocean. Suddenly, the skeptics were proven wrong. A bold vision had turned into reality, demonstrating that innovation and persistence could solve one of the biggest challenges in modern food production. John Zhang Bay. Number one isn't just big, it's enormous. Stretching 154 meters long and 44 meters wide, it's roughly the size of one and a half football fields. To put that in perspective, imagine 32 Olympic-sized swimming pools stacked onto a single ship. That's the volume of seawater it carries for raising fish 80,000 cubic meters. The ship uses a global cage-type workboat design, which means it's built to handle rough open seas far beyond the reach of coastal farms. It can sail to remote, pristine waters near the Arctic or Antarctic, giving fish access to the cleanest, most oxygen-rich environments possible. Inside, 12 massive breeding cabins function like self-contained underwater farms. Each cabin has its own system for circulating fresh seawater, creating the perfect conditions for fish growth. The scale is awe-inspiring, not just a farm on water, but a floating city for fish, designed to operate efficiently, safely, and sustainably in some of the harshest marine environments on Earth. This is more than a ship. It's a technological marvel and a glimpse at the future of aquaculture, massive, mobile, and built to meet the needs of billions. The magic of Zhanjiang Bay No. 1 isn't just its size, it's how the fish are cared for. Inside the 12 breeding cabins, seawater is constantly refreshed, 16 times per day, pulling in clean, oxygen-rich water from deep below the surface. This creates a stable, stress-free environment where fish can grow faster and healthier than in crowded coastal farms. Because the ship can move, it can seek out the best waters for each species. If coastal areas are polluted or a red tide strikes, the farm simply sails to cleaner, safer waters. This mobility also allows it to follow optimal temperatures, oxygen levels, and nutrient-rich zones, creating conditions that mimic the natural ocean but with far fewer risks. Every cabin is a controlled mini-ecosystem. Flow speed, water temperature, and oxygen levels are precisely regulated for each species. The result? Fish experience less stress, disease outbreaks are minimized, and survival rates are extremely high. It's like giving the fish their own luxury ocean hotel, where every detail is carefully managed for maximum health and growth. This controlled approach is what sets a floating fish farm apart from traditional aquaculture. It's not just bigger, it's smarter. The star resident of Zhanjiang Bay No. 1 is the yellow croaker, a fish known for its delicate taste and, well, its extreme sensitivity to noise and environment. 
in traditional farms, stress from crowded pens, poor water quality, or sudden temperature changes can stunt growth, reduce flavor, or even kill the fish. But on this ship, everything is designed to keep them calm and healthy. Quiet electric propulsion keeps sound levels below 60 decibels, quieter than a normal conversation, so the fish aren't stressed. Water flow, oxygen levels, and temperature are carefully regulated to match their natural habitat, almost like creating a custom ocean for each species. These conditions allow the fish to grow faster, healthier, and tastier. Survival rates exceed 95%, and because the controlled environment accelerates growth, the ship can produce two full harvests per year. That's faster than most coastal farms, which often struggle with disease outbreaks and environmental fluctuations. This combination of precision farming, mobility, and smart technology ensures the seafood isn't just abundant. It's premium quality, stress-free, and consistently available. It's like getting the taste and texture of wild-caught fish, but produced in a sustainable, scalable way. Zhangjiang Bay, number one. You know, this isn't just about producing fish. It's about protecting the ocean and creating a sustainable food system. Because the ship operates in a controlled, closed-loop system, it doesn't dump waste back into the sea, which really reduces pollution and helps maintain healthy marine ecosystems. Fish are grown in clean, oxygen-rich water, and that minimizes the need for antibiotics or chemicals. The farm's mobility allows it to avoid harmful events like red tides, typhoons, or polluted coastal waters, which further safeguards both the environment and the fish. And from an economic perspective, the benefits are just as striking. High survival rates and accelerated growth mean there are two harvests per year, ensuring a steady supply of premium seafood. Predictable yields lower costs, reduce the risk of market shortages, and create a reliable, year-round source of income. Each of the 35 crew members on board effectively manages over 200 tons of fish per year, demonstrating efficiency on a scale that's really unmatched by traditional farms. In short, this ship shows that innovation and technology can create a win-win system, sustainable seafood production that protects the ocean while meeting the growing demand for high-quality fish. It's a model that could change the future of aquaculture globally. Zhangjiang Bay number 1 is just the beginning. China has a bold, long-term plan to turn the open ocean into a blue granary a massive mobile network of deep-sea fish farms designed to feed millions sustainably. Over the next decade, the country plans to launch more than 50 large aquaculture ships, forming a fleet capable of producing over 10 million tons of seafood annually. These ships won't just raise yellow croaker. Plans include high-end species like silver cod and Antarctic ice fish, opening up new markets, and satisfying growing demand for premium seafood. Beyond ships, China is investing $10 billion to build 5,000 deepwater cages, 5 to 10 massive intelligent aquaculture platforms, and four national-level marine ranches. The vision is clear. Decentralize food production, reduce reliance on wild fish stocks, and create a resilient, scalable seafood supply chain. By combining mobility, technology, and industrial-scale planning, China is pioneering a new model of marine food production that could reshape global aquaculture. China isn't the only country experimenting with offshore aquaculture, but its approach really stands out for both speed and scale. Countries like Norway, Sweden, and the United States have been developing offshore salmon farms for years, using similar technology to raise fish in deeper, cleaner waters. Norway, in particular, has perfected salmon farming far from the coast, proving the concept works. What makes China unique is just how quickly it turned an ambitious idea into reality. From concept in 2018 to a fully operational supership in 2025, and now plans for an entire fleet, China is moving faster than anyone else. The scale is unprecedented.
fleets of floating farms combined with deep water cages and marine ranches could supply millions of tons of seafood annually, securing food for its population while reducing pressure on wild fisheries. This global context also raises questions about markets, trade, and environmental leadership. As China sets the pace, other nations may feel the pressure to innovate or collaborate. Floating fish farms could reshape seafood supply chains worldwide, influence pricing, and create a new blueprint for sustainable aquaculture in the 21st century. Not long ago, the idea of raising fish on a massive ship sailing across the ocean seemed like pure science fiction. Today, Zhanjiang Bay No. 1 proves it's possible, efficient, sustainable, and scalable. Floating fish farms offer year-round production, mobility to avoid natural disasters, and precision control over water quality, feeding, and breeding cycles. This innovation isn't just about solving China's food challenges. It's a glimpse into a global model where oceans are part of the solution, not part of the problem. The future of seafood could be mobile, high-tech, and environmentally responsible, reducing pressure on wild fish stocks and creating a reliable food source for billions. And honestly, this is only the beginning. More ships are coming, new species are being tested, and smarter, bigger floating farms are already in development. If you're fascinated by technology, food, and sustainability, this is a journey worth following. So here's the call to action. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Stay updated on deep sea farming, marine tech breakthroughs, and the race to feed the world, one ship at a time. The future of farming isn't just on land anymore, it's out at sea.